So what's up guys, Paul Salmon here. So this will be part two of uh, engine failure on takeoff with a Cessna 150. And that's coming up next. So this story begins last Thursday when a student and I took off for Oshkosh. We ended up popping into Cater uh, Illinois to get fuel, and when we left out of Decatur, uh, we lost our alternator. Yeah, we just burned up our, I smell it burning. Well, we just lost our alternator. So the following Monday, uh, Dean and I uh, piled up in the Cessna 150, and uh, our alternator came in, and uh, we went up and fixed the uh, helicopter. And as I departed out, I took the airplane home. I ended up having a couple engine out landings on <laughs> the aircraft. We are on the go. Lay the nose just a little bit. We're in here. Okay. What the f Maintenance 4 5 with you on tower. Hey, just made a uh, uh, engine out landing here. 6 uh, Julie Bravo, go around right side of the runway. 6 Julie Bravo. So we got the uh, aircraft back on the ground, back taxi, back, uh, did a complete run up, and I uh, thought, ah, I'm good to go, we'll give it another shot. So. Took off again, and lo and behold, it quit again. Cessna 61286, Decatur Tower, runway uh, 6 at Golf 1, clear for takeoff. On the go, we'll make left traffic. And clear for takeoff, uh, Golf 1, runway 6, and we'll keep it on the left side. And like I said, I'm going to try to get me a good 1,500 feet or so before I get very far away from the runway here. Okay, thanks. All right, try this again. See what the hell happened. Just the 748, go back to Cater Tower, proceed across runway 36, runway 6, clear for takeoff. And left turn, uh, at your discretion, traffic is a Cessna, and disregard, cancel your takeoff clearance. Yeah, we're coming back down again. 386, Roger, and if you make left turn, Golf 3, that's fine. Okay, so at that point, I decided maybe we ought to take this thing back to the hangar and figure out what in the world is going on with it. Now, some people would probably want to uh, argue that, you know, the second takeoff, I probably shouldn't have done the second takeoff to take it back to the hangar and that sort of thing. And I tend to agree with them, <laughs> all right? Maybe it wasn't the smartest thing to do, but it turned out okay. We got it back on the ground and then taxied to the hangar. So uh, Will Gatros and Dean then decided to uh, you know, take everything off, start looking at the aircraft. And uh, so I took a little run over to get some drinking water and a, and a new change of underwear. <laughs> and uh, by the time I got back, they'd uh, figured out uh, what the problem was, or at least part of the problem. Let's take a look at that. So, but yeah, here, look, you can see the difference right now. Looking up here, see yeah. that hole? Uh -huh. When I looked up there, that hole is completely covered in black or brown. Oh man! Like a mud dog or something. See, yeah. you, you, that hole is completely open and clean. Okay. When we first cool. got there, there was nothing there. Nothing. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see down in the. Bucket Couldn't really thing, see huh? down the hole very well until you move the, the vent enough. But that that weep hole was, it was completely. Yeah. So. So you guys end up just cleaning the shit out of it. Huh? Cleaning it out. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. Well, that'll do it. So Dean and Will had actually uh, cleaned that vent out real well. Uh, you could blow through the vent and uh, you, know, you can hear the uh, air bubbling in the uh, gas tank. So that uh, 
uh, left tank vent was obviously uh, open. So after finding that the uh, left fuel vent was occluded and got it all cleaned out and everything, I thought we were good to go. So I um, fired up the aircraft, went out. Um, I don't have any audio or video, didn't have a camera in the aircraft at all, but I'll just tell you what, what happened. So I ended up taxiing out and went out and ran the aircraft up, ran up fine, took off and uh, kept climbing straight ahead, got to, to about uh, 1,500 feet. Uh, we're good to go. Turned right uh, on course for uh, Cape Dorado and got about uh, oh three quarters of a mile, I guess, or so, maybe a mile from the uh, airport, and it quit again. So ended up turning back to the um, to the airport, uh, declared an emergency. Uh, didn't make it back to runway six, but I got it back to runway three six. I thought I was going to come up short there and just end up in the grass, but got it back to runway three six. And um, what was funny about all of this is. Um, after the you know after I got it back on the ground again, uh, it would it would run it was <clears throat> at an idle and the engine was running. So I'm rolling down the runway after I'd made this emergency landing. I'm rolling down the runway, and for those of you that don't know, the Cessna the 1966 Cessna 150 has a rear view mirror in it up on the dash. So I look at my rear view mirror, and I don't know how in the world the fire truck guys got there so quickly but they were about six inches off the back of that 150 with, with the fire truck. And to this day, I don't, I don't know if the, uh, how they got there that quick, but that was pretty impressive. So I ended up taxiing the aircraft back and uh, we ended up just uh, leaving the 150 there. And our game plan is uh, to basically uh, go through the entire fuel system again, check all the lines, check the vents. There's gotta be another partial occlusion to the, uh, to the vent, venting system or partial occlusion to uh, one of the um, um, fuel lines. But uh, anyway, we'll get it figured out and I'll go back up, we'll get the airplane again. And if we, uh, when we finally get it fixed up, I'll do a little short, uh, I guess it would be part three here, just to update you guys on the fact that we uh, finally got the airplane home and exactly what else we found uh, on the aircraft. But uh, so after three emergency landings or three engine out landings, uh, one day I decided we'd just leave the aircraft <laughs> here at Decatur and uh, take the helicopter home and uh, luckily it continued to run all the way to back to Cape Dorado and I didn't have any more engine outs for the day. Three in one day was enough so you know I don't know if the uh, ARF guys were uh, heard me taxiing out and they got in the truck and started it and had it idling waiting <laughs> as I was taking off on my third run but boy they got there fast and I am thoroughly impressed so uh, you know here here the guys did a great job and uh, they uh, deserve to be commended on their efforts. So I think it bears repeating again, you know, if that engine quits on you, get the nose down. You know, if you stall and spin, it's, uh, it's not gonna be good and likely gonna be a fatal event. So you know, if that engine quits, get the nose down, keep your speed up, don't stall it, and you'll be all right. You'll make it for another day. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you guys on the next video.